if they are aware of black politics in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, even into the 80s, they look at those era that though that, that era of black empowerment, the attempt of black folk to parlay the lessons of the civil rights and black power movements into real political power, not just black people in elective office, but black people who are now opening up the transfer of resources for empowerment of black people. Because when you're empowering black people, you're going to empower everyone else. But they look at that era as an era of cautionary tales. And there are two reasons for that, I think. One is external and in the other, the other category is internal. External because there is a war against a, a, a black empowerment. And that war continues to this day in terms of electoral politics. What we've seen the white nationalists do, and this is why I encourage folk to read uh, Jared Rodriguez's recent book, White Reconstruction. And he makes the argument that a lot of people make. In fact, it's not even an argument. He makes an observation. Since the passage of the Voting Rights Act, since the, the, the highlight of the, 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 the legislative dimension of the so-called civil rights movement, there has been an organized effort by the white nationalists, some of y'all old enough to remember Barry Goldwater, to literally push those advances back. Now, they can't return us to physical enslavement, not all of us anyway, by constitution. But, but there's the idea that you Negroes are not going to be human. And we will we will destroy it before we let this country change from the trajectory it was on when these white nationalists came here in the uh, 17th century, all the way up forward. Now, but anyway, the external factor, how that plays out in black politics in the wake of the Voting Rights Act, is the attempt to discredit black leaders and to curate, to use the word we kind of kind of been talking about, kicking around the last few months. To curate black leadership, if you can't eliminate all black leadership, curate, curate black leadership that's beholding to white interests, that is beholding to corporate interests. So let's just use very quickly, and I don't want to spend too much time on it tonight, but, 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 but this is something we need to talk about. And Brandon, this is what the, in fact, let me just say the second part of the answer. I said it was two things. Number one, the first thing was simple, that we had to recover this momentum of memory. But we haven't been able to execute it. The second part you asked, where have we seen this actually work? We haven't seen it work anywhere in the country in terms of, each generation learning from the previous generations and then using that to advance the cause. We have not put that into action, which leads me to say, and again, thanks to, to Sister Karen, Professor Hunter, thank you, Brother Urias, and all the team that we have, Nubia, we have narrative. Part of this now requires us to collect those memories from those who remember before any of them become, and more, more of them become ancestors. You were probably there. I know I was there with, with everybody else. Well, for the funeral of Marion S. Berry in the convention center in D.C. and hearing story after story after story of people, many of whom are now millionaires, who said that Marion Berry walk in the room as mayor of Washington, D.C. and say, where the black lawyers? I said, OK, uh, this meeting is adjourned. I'll be back when there are black lawyers in this room who write bond issues, because what I'm not going to do is get this over to developers. Remind me of something Alicia Keys <laughs> said when she was asked, uh, did you have you ever had an issue with somebody whose music you wanted to sample and they didn't want you to sample it? And she told the story of how she had a song that had a, a melodic line that sounded very close to a line in Purple Rain. And she flew to London to meet Prince. And she told Prince that she wrote this song for a grandmother. And she was talking about believing in yourself and all this. And Prince sat there and listened. And she said, and he, she said, the Prince says, sis, I feel you. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and I hope that for that little piece that sounds like Purple Rain, that you can rearrange the chords just a little so that it doesn't sound as much or so that it's not quite uh, so that we don't have to worry about licensing because um, their children are not going to go to college on my music. And so at that point, these kids just laughed and said, well, what can I say? See, that's a lesson. You understand that's institutional memory, but the external factors were those type of leaders had to be discredited. So for, there are there's, there are now two generations of young black people and older black people who didn't know Marion Barry, who if you say the name Marion Barry, or as they say in Southeast or in D.C., as we know, as we know, Brother Barry, uh, bro, Brother Brandon, Marion Barry is one is one word, Marion Barry. Those of you, if you don't know Marion Barry from Mississippi by way of Lemoyne College, who then went to uh, was in Fisk University in the Masters in Chemistry, would have had a Ph.D. in chemistry, but the civil rights movement called him and he became the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And then when he moved to D.C., brought all them SNCC people to D.C. with him some of whom are still here in terms of that leadership. There's now 
two generations of black people, you say the name Marion Barry, they start laughing. Because Chris Rock stomping up and down a damn stage at the Constitution Center or wherever he was, talking about smoke, the mayor smoke crap, the mayor smoke crap. I felt like, get that boy a banjo and some more blackface so he can just finish this minstrel act. You don't know a damn thing about Marion Barry. But the point is this. Those type of hit jobs are combined with scrutiny that is never leveled at white public officials. You got a whole criminal right now that if Tis James can't bring him down, he might end up being the president of the United States in the election of 2024, a whole criminal who almost started a war with China so that he could foment a coup against him not uh, being uh, reelected. He's still walking around in Mar-a-Lago inviting white murderers from uh, Wisconsin down for photo ops. Marion Barry was prosecuted to the fullest extent of everything, and he wasn't alone. In fact, I would, I would encourage folk, if you want to read a little bit more about this, um, um, my friend Derek Musgrove wrote a book on the uh, targeting of black political leaders over the years. And it's an excellent book, deep scholarship, very important, a lot of things you can learn from it. But I prefer, in terms of analysis of what we're talking about, and then I'll end with this, um, my man Ron Walters, the great political scientist, um, who was an activist scholar for many years on the faculty at Howard University, then University of Maryland. Ron Walters always understood that the type of Black political, political leaders we need, which is why he taught Black politics, along with Mac Jones and a lot of those cats that came out of the Atlanta University system, uh, came out of New Orleans when you start talking about Shelby Lewis, who is still around, um, Jewel Presage, uh, Adolph Reed Sr. in Arkansas. Um, these were these early scholars of political science, um, who including Jacob Carruthers, interestingly enough, a Prairie View at one time uh, before he ended up in Chicago, who are saying we must have a politics where elected officials do what is best for the black community. And that thinking which emptied into the 60s and 70s and 80s, was slowly attacked from outside. That's number one of the two. And then number two, the inside part, this is what I was talking about. The inside part of the challenge was the cultivation of generations of Black elected officials who saw their self-interest before the interest of that previous generation's interest, that, that commitment. And so they say, well, getting elected, being in office is, is evidence of black progress. We don't care what color the politicians are. I think we've cared too much about what color the politicians are. What we need to see is policy. And so how do we, how do we learn from that? We have to take our lessons from those at the local level, those at the state level, those at the federal level who are actually doing that kind of work and here in places like Narrative and Nubia, we need to share references on examples of people who are doing that kind of work, lift them up, listen to them, invite them into dialogue. We see Karen do it all the time in her radio show uh, through the week, especially. We need to look at them and we need to ask them, who did you learn from? Who did you learn from? What mistakes have you made? What mistakes do you think they made? What successes did they have? And how can we combine our learned wisdom and this becomes a form of study that then can translate into networking and empowerment. I'm thinking about the young brother who's the mayor of Birmingham. I'm thinking about uh, my friend and brother Chokwe Antar Lumumba in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm thinking about uh, some of the brothers and sisters who are mayors of some of the smaller towns. Jackie Robinson's hometown, for example, in Cairo, Georgia, has its first black mayor. It was elected a couple of years ago. And they are strong throughout the country. And not just that. Other elected officials, not just mayors, uh, a lot of these young progressive, so to speak, prosecutors, whether it be Marion Mosby, Mobley in, in, in Maryland, whether it be the sister in St. Louis or Wesley Cook out there in Ferguson. I mean, we have to find those people and share what they have learned and reconnect so that we have the momentum of memory. Um, I think that's one of the ways we have to do our own curation. And when other people come in and say, we have to have coalition, we got to be progressive. Everybody calm down. We'll be over there in a minute, social structure. Why? We have to have a governance conversation now. Mm -hmm.